All right, guys, I'm Stephanie from Gathered in the Kitchen, and today we are going to be making a Dollar Tree bunny wreath. I'm gonna give you the full tutorial. It is going to be using deco mesh, which all of these supplies I've purchased from the Dollar Tree except the wreath form, and I'll tell you exactly where you can buy everything. So let's go ahead and get started. Our supply list is going to be an 18 inch wire wreath form. I actually bought this one at Walmart only because my local Dollar Tree did not have any more wreath forms in right now. And I know sometimes they usually come in like the 12 inch and I wanted a little larger one because my whole inspiration was I found this adorable little bunny hanging sign at the Dollar Tree and uh, the tag just says, East, happy Easter decor and I wanted to put this inside of my wreath so the 18 inch is going to be perfect for that so we've got that we've got the deco mesh they call it decorative mesh at Dollar Tree I have it in three rolls and this is six inches wide by five yards I have three rolls of them and then I also have one spool of ribbon it's two and a half inch wide uh, wired ribbon. Again, this is also from Dollar Tree and it says Happy Easter on the tag. Then we need some pipe cleaners. I just have a huge pack of pipe cleaners that I've collected over the years and we're mostly going to just be using our white ones today. Then for extra supplies, I have a um, two-sided cutting mat. This is a, like a self-healing cutting mat. Mine is Fiskars and you can just purchase this at uh, your local craft store or Walmart. And then I have two different cutters here. They're just roller cutters. Either one is fine. This blade's getting a little dull, so I'm probably gonna use this one. Sorry, I've got a little guy back here. <sighs> Crafting as well. I have some scissors. These are also Fisker scissors. All of these are actually. This, this, and the mat are all Fiskars, as well as this plastic edge. So I like this because it has the uh, grid on it. So if I'm needing to cut something to an exact size or have a guide rail. And that is it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna raise my chair up and I'll probably stand for some of this, but I know my head's gonna be cut off. So what we're going to do is move all of our supplies out of the way. And we're going to start with our decorative mesh. So I'm going to open this up. Open. Okay. And what we're going to do, this is basically just like very meshy like, and it's got a really pretty sparkle to it. So I liked this one. I am going to cut mine at eight inches. So on my grid right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that inside square is eight inches so I know I can just line pull this to the edge right like that and a lot of times I stand up when I'm doing cutting get my rolling blade ready get it on there and just cut they do not have to be perfect that you'll never know if you have a really straight edge or not you just need them to be pretty much the same size so we are just going to cut a bunch of these three rolls worth you guys can use alternating colors with these. Um, I've done that in my Dollar Tree witch wreath tutorial, the hat that I did. I used um, some purple, some black, and orange. But when I came across this one with the one, two, three, four, four colors in it, I knew this was the best way to go. Made it a lot easier. So if you guys are tuning in, I'd love to know where you guys are from and what the weather is like where you guys are today. And if you have any questions at any time about this tutorial, just let me know and I will pause and answer the best I can. So, all right. This does usually take quite a while, but it's worth it in the end because you end up with a beautiful wreath. So, and hopefully three rolls of this is enough. Maybe I should have bought more. <laughs> I always say buy extra because you can return it in instead of running short with your wreath in the middle of your project. That's always kind of the worst when that happens. I've had it happen way too many times and then you go back to the store and you try to purchase those same supplies again and they don't sell them anymore or they're all sold out, especially the holiday seasonal items at Dollar Tree that happens all of the time. You have to buy them early on before everybody else catches all the Pinterest crap.
crafts <laughs> that are being released by bloggers and they snag them all up. So definitely start thinking about your holiday projects in advance and head to the Dollar Tree early on. Okay, so at the end of the spool, this is always stapled. There's always at least one or two staples. So you have to carefully remove them. You don't pinch your fingers with them. Or like this one, I just have to tear it because it was too wrapped in there. All right, so let's see. And usually the end, it's really curly already. So and sometimes can be a little hard. Don't worry if it's super straight or if some pieces are a little longer than others. All right, moving right along into our next roll. Oh, and this is actually even different. Huh, I didn't even realize this. This is a little different than this one. These are larger color blocks where these are smaller with a couple extras in it. But that's fine. No problem, you'll never really notice that. These are, these are really cute, and this would make a really cute unicorn wreath. If anybody has made a unicorn wreath, I'd love to see what you've done. Post it in the comments. So this is where it's really nice to have this roller mat. If you guys caught the Dollar Tree wreath, um, I did not have my roller mat or my um, rolling cutting tools out of storage yet. Um, our house had been struck by lightning and caught fire, so everything we owned was removed from the house or thrown away. And so I had to use scissors, and cutting the steak all mesh in a straight line like that can actually be really difficult with scissors because it starts to curl on you. It's hard to hold that and hold this piece still flat while you're cutting. So you can do it, but it's definitely a lot easier if you have a cutting mat and a rolling tool. And it also helps you really measure because a lot of times what happens is this will start to slip and slide if you're doing it like on, I have a granite counter that I'm doing this on, um, and it would really be slippery. Where this kind of almost grips it just a smidge. So that's why I like doing my crafts on top of these little mats. And speaking of my craft room, I am down here in it right now. It is a work in progress. Um, I have big dreams for this room. <laughs> but with that, there's a lot of other house projects going on trying to get our house back to a really livable condition um, since the fire. So we're almost, we are at 18 months now um, since the fire. So and we're making progress. Um, we've been, had a few road bumps along the way, um, but... We are really working hard to get this back to the former glory and beauty that our 1886 home has. So you guys can follow along on that journey. Over at Gathered in the Kitchen, I share lots of updates about the house and projects. Right now we've got um, a green kitchen in the works and I am absolutely, absolutely in love with it. My husband has done many, many kitchens for us. Um, this is house number four for us actually. And so um, here we're, we're at the end of this spool. Um, this is kitchen renovation number three for us out of our homes. And uh, the last one I absolutely loved. If you guys wanna check that one out, head on over to Gathered in the Kitchen and it is um, the search kitchen renovation before and after for seven under $7,000. We did everything in that kitchen, including appliances, hardwood floors, granite, everything. Um, all brand new cabinets, everything for under 7,000. So I share all my tips over there on that and you guys can catch that um, over there. And I love that kitchen, but I am absolutely loving, loving, loving our green kitchen now. It is exactly what I would have wanted, but it's, of course, you know, all DIY projects take a little longer than what you'd like. And you get a little distracted by doing wreath tutorials and stuff like that because, you know, you have to stay up with the holidays and get your craft on. So, all right, here we go. We have just a little bit left of this last roll of deco mesh. Hopefully I have enough for real. I'm actually a little nervous that I don't have enough here. We're gonna have to make sure I spread it out. 
I usually like my wreaths really full. However, if there's not enough, you just have to improvise and um, fill it where you can. So, okay. We're almost done. And you can tell if you've been watching exactly where I'm cutting each time, they're not all even, and that's completely fine. It, you will never notice. So all you wanna do is make sure they are mainly the same size. We have a huge pile here. <laughs> Hope you guys can't totally see it, but there's a big pile of these little rolls, and they automatically like self roll, which really is helpful. So, all right, this one is really on there good with these staples. I'm gonna cut that. Okay, get rid of this. All right, so our next thing is we're going to be taking pipe cleaners. Let's see here. How long do I want to make these? A lot of times you end up cutting them just a little too short and then it's really hard to twist it on. I'd rather have a pipe cleaner that's just a little long on the back end and you see the tail than be really trying to twist so hard or hurting your fingers because the end has been cut and then it's all pokey. So I'm going to keep them pretty long and just cut them in half. So let's see here. Probably gonna have to stand up for this one gonna line a bunch up. Here come the dogs. Everybody always finds mommy. <laughs> All right. I'm just gonna cut these. All right. So we've just cut them in half for the most part. Some of them are a little longer than others, but that's okay. All right. I'm gonna cut some more. And you guys can... <coughs> You guys can just cut them with your scissors too. It's a lot easier actually with the scissors. So, so that's our new puppy barking. He is quite the funny little guy. Cozy, can you take Dublin up? Thank you. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started with that. The dogs play so wild. They make it seem like they're killing each other, but they're not. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So we've got our piles of all of our deco mesh. We have a big pile of pipe cleaners and we are going to get started. So what we're going to do is take one roll, one piece of deco mesh and just roll it. You're not gonna roll it too tight. You want it to be kind of like where you can fit like two fingers or something in it, two. And then we're gonna do the same thing. Do another one. Then we're going to put them together. Just squish them. And then twist. So it will look like that. Almost like a butterfly. So now normally what I would do is I would be using a deco mesh rope. I don't know if that's exactly what it's called, but usually they sell it at the Dollar Tree, but mine did not have it this time, so I had to use pipe cleaners instead. But if you guys check out my witch wreath tutorial, it basically makes it look way cuter than a pipe cleaner. It is just a very thin rope like this, so it's like a tube, and then in like the form of like a pipe cleaner almost, but then it just really makes it really pretty, and you just tie that on almost like a ribbon the way you tie these on. So... I wish they had that, but they didn't. So now all I'm gonna do is start taking my wreath form. I'm gonna try to get that up there. So I've just put it on both sides of that and I'm going to twist. It's hard holding it up and doing it. I'm going to twist and now that is on. Now you just repeat this process over and over and over again. So you can do three, uh, tubes together but like I said I don't think I have enough <laughs> so I am only going to be doing two for this wreath and then just putting them on that one's pretty good 
You may have a little bit of fraying. So see sometimes that some of the little tubes will fray. You can just snip that off and discard it. It's really no big deal. This won't fray too, too much where you're gonna have issues with it on your wreath coming apart. Um, you can keep these outside. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip now to, so on the first one, I did on the first rung and then the next rung or the like third one over. So just skip one each time. So now this time I'm gonna do the middle one and the last one. So that's how you get a really full wreath and make sure that you um, have a proper spacing. So, all right, but yeah, so as I was saying, you can keep these outside. Um, they will fade over time. So if it's in direct sunlight or a lot of rain or snow, depending on where you live, um, you will notice that it will start to fade. Um, but you can just make another wreath for the next holiday. So um, I've never tried at spring um, any of the like Scotch Guard type products. I think 3M has one um, for wreaths because this really isn't like fabric, but they do sell um, like a spray that can be used for wreaths um, for the fabric or like flowers, any floral on your wreaths um, that you can buy. I, I know like Hobby Lobby would have that and probably Joanne's. So all right, then you just fluff it and you move right along. I'm going to do it kind of sparse along the whole way to make sure I do have enough and then I'll come back and fill any areas that look a little bald um, when I am on the second go round. So. I'd love to know what kind of wreaths you guys are making for Easter or spring. I've got a couple other tutorials. I made a tulip wreath that, that actually was a huge hit. That one uh, really took off and a lot of people have viewed that tutorial. It's using, you can use fresh tulips, but I would not recommend that because it would wilt over a short period of time. So I just purchased, um, like bouquets of tulips, artificial tulips. I think those are from Walmart actually. And I used ribbon and a foam wreath uh, form to create that beautiful tulip wreath. That was so, so pretty. I absolutely love that. It's actually sitting over in a storage unit right now. <laughs> I couldn't throw it away after the fire. <laughs> it was hanging up in my house, in my kitchen actually when the fire happened, so um, I still have it. Anyway, it can go outside. <laughs> but yeah, I'd love to see some wreaths that you guys have done. I've done a couple other uh, Easter themed wreaths. I've got a bunny burlap wreath, well no, it's a like a grapevine <coughs> wreath form that I used to create a really cute bunny and I used burlap for his ears and everything and it was so cute. Um, those are all on YouTube or on Gathered in the Kitchen. So. All right. so it's just a tedious process of repeating the same exact thing over and over and over. But it's really worth it at the end because it's so pretty when you're done. So. Another thing you can do is, I should have done this. Think about it. Maybe I'll do it. I'll cut some real quick. I was going to do just a big bow with it, this really cute ribbon, but what you can do, let me show you guys this. Colby, go ahead and just take them upstairs, please. During the rebuild, our doors kind of had a little bit of an issue, so we don't have a door anymore to the basement because the framing. So um, I can't lock the dogs out of here. All right. With this, I'm going to just do a couple of these and show you guys a great way to incorporate a little bit extra flair. I'm going to cut these just a little bit shorter. So I'm going to cut them six inches, the inner darker black on here. So let's just do a couple. I want to make sure I have enough to make a bow for this cute guy because maybe what I'll do is 
tie like a bow around his neck or something. All right, so we'll do three. Slide this over. So now we're still gonna go back to these rolls. Still do two rolls. Okay, so we've got our two rolls. Still put them together the way that we normally did, two. And then you're going to take your ribbon. And now this is printed the same on both sides, so it doesn't matter which side you use. And you just lay it over top like that. Take your pipe cleaner. And still make your little, I don't know what you call these little things. We'll call them picks right now. <laughs> the same exact way. That one's a little off. I didn't roll that quite great. But there you go. You can see that it just adds a little bit of extra cuteness and flair to these little picks that we're making. So if I stuck that on. Now if you guys check out that um, Halloween witch wreath, you'll see how I did that. Um, I did a bunch of ribbon wrapped in with all of these um, cute little deco mesh rolls and they, it just looked so adorable. See, so that just adds, hopefully it's kind of hard to see because it's bright, but we're just, we'll just add a couple. We'll add some along the way now. So I'll keep it in. <laughs> All right, let's go back to these. Now this one, this was the end of the spool, so it's really frayed. So I'm gonna just stick that tightly in some place and you won't really see it, that it's fraying. And then at the end, I can come back and trim it so you won't see all of that extra flapping all over. So. Okay. There we go. Just keep sticking them on. So speaking of Easter, there are a bunch of Easter crafts not related to wreaths. Um, I have a basket liner tutorial over at Gathered in the Kitchen. So if you guys buy really cute baskets either at the store or at um, a thrift shop, I teach you how to create a liner, a fabric liner to go on the inside of your basket to make it look really cute. Now I embroidered mine, but obviously you don't have to do that. If you have a silhouette cameo or a Cricut, you can use those and do um, lettering that way. But, um, and I do need to make new ones this year because ours actually were thrown away. They really got charred in the fires because they were in the attic. So um, I need to make new ones. I guess now, I have to hold myself accountable since I'm telling you guys I need to do that. So I have to make new baskets for my kiddos. All right. Now, if you're having issues with these, with like slipping around, like on the wire wreath form, you can just add more to make it more full or just to, um, try to tie it really tight. I know sometimes it can kind of hurt your fingers just a little bit, um, but... I guess after you've been crafting for a while, you'll develop some thicker fingers. <laughs> it's kind of like cooking. It hurts at first to touch hot pans, but then after a while, I think there's a Julia Child quote or saying about that. Um, you know, you kind of no longer need the hot pod or hot pad to uh, get the hot pans out. So completely. I mean, still need to get out of the oven, but. So what we could do is I could just do a partial wreath with these rolls and do something else over here. Like I could do flowers, I could do burlap, anything. I mean, really, that's the great thing about wreath making is the designs can be completely up to you. And the as long as you're, you can create it, then everything goes. Um, you just have to be able to dream it up. So I've done a couple wreaths where I have done like a half burlap and half um, 
different type of material, like either a fabric. Um, I think I've done some with some chevron and stuff like that. And they do look really cute. Another thing is you can do yarn. Now I did buy, I have another wreath I want to be making. <laughs> um, but I have a tutorial on this one over, oh, over on the blog as well, gathered in the kitchen, um, using yarn and you would use a foam wreath form and wrap the skein of yarn all around the wreath form and then decorate it however you'd like. They, those turn out really cute. Another thing you can do, and I did this one for a St. Patrick's Day, was it taking felt. So you would cut strips of felt, wrap it around the foam wreath again, because to wrap things around these wire wreaths is a little hard. Um, it doesn't really like stay on very well. So I would definitely use a foam wreath or I don't know what they're called. Straw wreaths, I guess is what you would call it. Um, I know Hobby Lobby sells those. So they basically look like a hay bale, <laughs> but they're not in the form of a hay bale. They are um, just straw wreaths. And they're in the form of a wreath. And those work really cute for the fall as well, especially if you're trying to incorporate some uh, more like fall-like designs. Then you, if you don't cover that wreath completely, you'll see the hay coming through. So, okay. Okay. Oh, I'm really running low on these. Yikes. going to spread it out a little more and probably what I'll do is I will head back to my Dollar Tree and hope that they still have one more spool. I thought I bought them all out but um, with the three that I bought because like I said you guys have to head there early to get the supplies as soon as those holiday uh, seasonal supplies are released they usually sell really quickly so because there are a lot of dollar tree or dollar store um, crafters out there who like to change out the things that they buy there. And uh, speaking of that, I have a bunch of projects in the works that I'll be sharing with you guys. So I hope you guys will come back for a few more tutorials. I don't think I have, oh, I do have it down here. I'll show you guys at the end of the video what I'm going to do with a couple other fun Easter things that I bought at Dollar Tree. So. Right. Now, one question I get a lot of times is how do you hang your wreath? So we've got obviously all of these pipe cleaners on the back here. You could always just twist one and hang it on a command strip. Or if you guys have those over the door, um, like metal hangers, you can use that and just hook it onto that. Uh, but another thing you can do is actually just take a pipe cleaner and form it into a circle and put it on. So lots of ways to hang a wreath. Don't worry about it that we haven't done that yet because that can always come at the end. Um, and I would definitely suggest waiting to the end to figure out what you, where you want your hanger to go because you may find out that one side is a little more full than the other or, and you can balance the design of your wreath by flipping what you thought would be the bottom to now the top, things like that. So I always wait to the end to figure out which way my wreath is really going to go. So, yikes, we're gonna run out. Now, for instance, so if I run back to the Dollar Tree and I cannot find any more of this colored uh, deco mesh, what I would do is try to find a coordinating color. So like if they have any of the colors that are in, it, in this, like the light baby blue, the yellow, purple, or pink, I would just pick a coordinating color and add that in. Um, or just white, because obviously with this being an Easter wreath, white would look completely fine with it. You just... Don't want to try to pick a color that's not in your wreath and go with that. So. Uh -huh. 
Now my boys are down here going through my craft supplies and I'm hearing them say there's all sorts of treasure. I found a lighter. Okay, that's for ribbon. <laughs> That was always my favorite spot to go to, was digging through my mom's craft supplies. It drove her absolutely nuts because later she would go to get something out of her closet or, you know, the whole basement. I come from a long, 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 long line of crafters, so I can't help myself. Um, but down in her rooms, she had, oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how many cabinets. My mom had so much craft stuff. But I would just go down there and fiddle and putz through stuff and then use whatever I wanted to just create, I don't even know what at the time, you know, just random things. And she would go down there and try to find something and then get so annoyed with me because I had taken it and used it for something. And my kids now do the exact same thing to me. It's payback for sure. They're always, always in my stuff. Just the other day, they were cutting my very, very expensive um, metallic paper to make Pokemon cards. <laughs> oh, those were quite the expensive Pokemon cards so that they created there. So. So I'm definitely going a little lighter here than what I did over there just because we are running out and I'm gonna have to go back. You cannot do that, but. No, don't look till I have your shoes. Okay. We've got the elliptical down in the basement as well. One of these days I'll start using it. <laughs> and, uh, but in the meantime, the kids like to go on it and try to exercise. have to fluff so we are nearing the end of this but as you guys can see these it reads do take a little bit of time if you have about an hour I would say at most that's really all you need I mean this has been just about around a half hour and we're almost done so um, the beginning if you're a little bit more of a perfectionist with rolling your rolls it might take you a little bit longer but don't worry about being a perfectionist I really have to emphasize that it this will look beautiful if your rolls are perfectly even or per, not even at all obviously you want them to be similar in size but as long as um, they're all rolled <laughs> you're really never gonna notice if that one roll is a little longer than that one so don't worry I know a lot of times I get some comments because um, there are a lot of people out there who are very perfectionist. So my mother is one of them <laughs> and I drive her a little bit crazy the way that I'm not a perfectionist when I'm doing my crafts because there's a little bit of a freedom that you can grant yourself when you are making wreaths like this so, so, because you can always come back and snip something if it's a little too long. Um, if it's a little frayed, if you need to fill in a little more someplace. So don't be too hard on yourself, just have fun. And that's the best thing that I can tell you with crafts is just have fun. Even if you kind of mess something up, don't worry about it. It can usually always be fixed. And the chances of somebody else noticing what you notice are really slim. We have that all of the time. I need a couple more pipe cleaners. We have that all of the time with just even our house work where we notice it, but other people, you know, would have never noticed or have a single clue that something, you know, didn't line up exactly right or something. So don't worry about it. All right. We are completely, I have one left. Let's put this one here out of rolls now. So buy four rolls if you're going to be making an 18 inch wreath form because I, I can't reach it. I'm a little short. So here's our last roll. Put this one on. Oop. So sometimes what I like to do is see how these two rolls, they're lined up the same way with the colors the same way, flip them. So the purple matches with the pink, 
and the pink matches with the purple down at the bottom. It just kind of makes it not look so uniform. If it, you are, if you have rolls where you have a lot of color in them. So this one kind of got a little unrolled. So we're going to re-roll it. Okay. That like that. Okie dokie. So here is our wreath. Let's slide some of those to just try to fill it up. So for the most part, I could have made three rolls or three spools of the deco mesh work, but for my personal preference, I like my wreaths more full. So this is what it looks like with the three, but I'm going to definitely try to go back and purchase some more. So now we're going to move on to putting our cute little Easter bunny on. Now he has like a little hanger, so that's going to make this convenient. I'm going to take off the tag. Let's see here. All we would do, so I'm going to hang it right there. I'm going to take another pipe cleaner. This one I'm not going to make as long. Scissors. Just cut a little piece of pipe cleaner wrap it around the hanger on this little cute bunny guy and then do the same thing that I've just done with all of these rolls. Twist it on to the wire wreath form. This I want to get pretty tight because I don't want him moving around too much. What, I, what you can do is where the separators are so you'll have these sections on your wire wreath form, you can do it closer to that. I'm gonna do that actually. Let me show you guys how I'm gonna do that. And then kind of like crisscross it back and forth over the separator. Just to kind of make sure I don't get him on backward now. Okay, just so it kind of gives it some durability to not be moving. Okay, there we go. So we've done that. Now these have separated a little bit and I can just slide them back. And there we go. There is our cute little bunny wreath guy. Um, we can add a bow. I'm gonna show you guys how I like to make my bows. I usually don't measure my bows, so I apologize, but I will this time to tell you guys how long this is. So there are two different ways to make a bow. You can make it where you have the tails attached already to the bow, where it's all one piece, the bow, or you can do it where it's two pieces. So the tails are separate from the loops. I'm going to go ahead and do it that way, the two pieces. So. Let's see here. We are going to cut this at 28 inches. Let's cut it there. So we have 28 inches and I'm going to fold it in half like that. So I just basically looped it and I have a little bit of overlay. Now here is where a hot glue gun comes in handy. If you are working with a really big bowl like this, you can hot glue right in these. So like this piece to there and it just like a little dab um, and that will help secure your bow together so you don't lose it while you're trying to make it. But so that's gonna be one loop. That's cute. And now we're going to make one just a little shorter. So let's see, let's make this one. We did that one 28. Let's do this one at 20. Cut it. I'm going to do the same thing I just did. And now I've got a second little loop, a smaller one. Now we will put these together. And this will just make a really cute full bow like that. And then you can. There are, again, so many different ways to make a bow. Over on the blog and on YouTube, I have a Bodabra bow tutorial. So there is this amazing tool that helps you make perfect bows every single time. Um, 
I don't know where mine is at the moment, so I can't use it, but you guys can uh, purchase one of those and then you never have to worry about your bows. They come out beautiful every single time uh, because it's a holder that purposely makes your bows <laughs> be beautiful. So that's what that will look like. What you can do is just make your long tails and then find the middle and tie it. Basically you make a knot and that way is really easy. Um, or you can use something else like a pipe cleaner and clip, like, let me show you guys. This is a long one. Do the same thing what we just did with the, all of those, uh, uh, rolls. We're just going to twist it on. This is usually how I make my bows. Just something like that. You twist it. Now we could end right there and just stick that on, but I always like my little tails. So fold this in half and let's see here how do we want to and what you can do is you can hot glue that to the back or like I said you guys can um, tie this so that's pretty much our corner spot I'm just gonna tie this And I will have to trim up my pipe cleaners, um, but I did leave them on so then I can adhere this to the wreath really easy. So, so actually they're still sticking out and that's going to be perfect. So then you just kind of play with it, pull where you need to, to fluff, um, whatever side of the bow needs some fluffing. And then always, I don't know why, but this is something I always do. I take my tails and I cannot stand when they're not lined up. So first of all, I'm going to trim them. I didn't tie that on very straight. I'm going to trim them so they're even. And then I love tails where they have the little V cut into them. So you have to think which way creates the V. That would not be the V. I'd have to go, you have to think hard <laughs> that way. So you fold it in half it and then you are going to cut from the side that has the wire on it up um, onto the soft side that is folded. So I'll cut it like this and voila. Now you have these really cute ends to the bow. And now that is what my boys was talking about finding a lighter down here. I take my lighter and let me grab it and I'll show you guys. Okay. So you take a lighter and you basically just very carefully seal the edges of your bow or your ribbon. So, and there you go. Now we're going to put this on. We could do it. This is the fun thing about bows. You can put it wherever. You could put it at the top and that would hang over my cute little bunny. I don't know. Do we like it like that? Where, let me see, let me lower it. His ears would kind of come out and the bow would be behind him a little bit or you could do it now obviously because he's holding these signs you could go there or even under if I didn't like those signs I could put it on his um, like underneath his chin but I think for this let's see we'll just go I'm not gonna go over top exactly I'm gonna go to the side and I can slide these and then this will just hang so I'm going to take these pipe cleaners that I had again and just twist them on just like all of those rolls that we did. Here we go. And now there is our cute little rabbit wreath all made from Dollar Tree supplies except the wreath form. but. For, let me see here, it was under $5 that I made this wreath. And obviously I need to go back and grab one more roll to fill him out, fill out the wreath a little bit, but that looks really cute. Now, let's attach our door hanger. So what you can do, I'm gonna use a different color so I know where my hanger is because there's all of those white pipe cleaners on the back, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it. So all I'm gonna do is fold a pipe cleaner in half like this and then just kind of come up 
a little over halfway and just start twisting. So I create like a little loop with tails. And that's it. Then I just find where I would want my middle of my wreath and do the same thing. You just put it onto the wire wreath form, twist it. Now you've got this little hanger um, and your wreath can hang on any door now. cute little wreath. I might play around with the bow a little bit and move it to the side and fluff it a little bit more. But here is our cute little Dollar Tree deco mesh wreath using a cute little bunny. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you check out Gathered in the Kitchen for more wreath tutorials as well as all of the other things that we talked about today. So I will see you guys. Oh, I was going to show you some of these other projects. So at the Dollar Tree. Right now, I also bought this cute little uh, decor hanger thing. This would be really cute on the wreath as well. If you don't like the bunny, you could do something like this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually redo the backside of it and do like something farmhousey. So we're gonna do that. And then I also purchased this one where it's in the shape of an Easter egg. I'm gonna do the same thing on the back but you could also put that on your reading. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. Okay guys, I just picked up some more deco mesh from the Dollar Tree. They did not have the ones that I used to in the wreath tutorial so far with the different colors, but that's okay. We're gonna make the most of it. We got pink, purple, and then I did get one more spool of the wired ribbon that we were using. So I'll go back home and show you guys how I'm gonna make that wreath a little more fluffy. Okay guys, I'm back. I went to the dollar store, picked up those supplies, and then I came home and made a bunch more little rolled picks. And I'm going to use them to fill in the wreath that we were making. Because I like very, very full wreaths. I did remove the bow at this point, um, just while I'm working on this. And then I'll decide at the end if I wanna add it back or leave it. Um, so, all I'm going to do is start filling these in wherever I see gaps on the wreath. So what I typically do when I am making wreaths like this, the rolled deco mesh, I do just make a huge pile of these little rolled picks is what I'm gonna call them. And then it's easy to just start filling them in on the wreath when they're all ready. But because this was a live tutorial, I chose to show you guys exactly the step-by-step -step of rolling them and then starting to put them on the wreath. But um, either way is fine. But I like to kind of like batch task and just making a bunch of these all at once is really easy, typically. All right, so for all of these the extra picks that I just made, I did add the little ribbon to them as well, just to kind of give it a little more oomph. Um, so total now, we will have five rolls of the deco mesh on here instead of the three that I had purchased originally. Um, my store did not have the same rolls anymore of these uh, multicolor ones. So I ended up just having to do pink and purple, uh, but that's okay because it matches the wreath pretty well. So, um, again, if that happens to you, just uh, buy some kind of coordinating color that will look okay with the wreath. Um, when I purchased mine, they did only have the three. Now that I really remember there were only three. So that's why I bought that hoping 
that it would work. And typically if this was a smaller size wreath form, so I'm using an 18 inch and I did have to buy that at Walmart to buy that large. Um, if I would have bought the ones at the Dollar Tree, I think they're either a 12 or 14 inch. I think they're 12. Um, the three rolls would have been completely fine. But um, because this wreath form is so large, being at 18 inches, it definitely required more, at least to make it fluffy enough the way that I like my wreaths to look. So, all right. And when I did go, I actually called them right after um, the first part of this video, and they told me that uh, they maybe had uh, some pink and purple um, and that they would sell it right away. So I, if I could get there as soon as possible, I said, I'll be there right now. And I got there, of course, within minutes after hanging up with them and they had to hold it for me because that's how fast this ribbon at the Dollar Tree goes. So if you guys are wanting to make a wreath like this, go stock up, buy extra, and then you can always return it. But it's hard to find it uh, later in the season or if you've already started and now you need more supplies. So. At the Dollar Tree I used to shop at in North Carolina. Whew, that stuff would go so fast. Everybody there was into crafts all the time. And it just went like crazy. Like the day that it was released, it was almost like people knew <laughs> what days the trucks would come in with all the holiday and seasonal decor craft items. So it always went. I many times drove all over the place, like up to like, 40 miles just trying to get some of the same supplies that I had gotten. So yeah, they're definitely a great place to buy craft supplies. Right. So I'm just filling in. Now, if you guys uh, like your wreaths more full, you could always do more than the five rolls that I've used now. Or if you like them not so full, that's totally fine. You can do less. But I always think that the more full the wreath, the better, especially if you're hanging it on your front door and you want people to see it from the road or the sidewalk, whatever the case may be. I just always think that really full wreaths look pretty. And it's amazing how fast these little roll picks go. Once you get them all made, which usually is the part of the wreath making process that takes the longest. Once you get them all made, then it goes by with a breeze that when you start adding them onto the wreath, you really realize how quickly um, those rolls can go and that they don't really necessarily go a super, super long way. Now I know if you buy uh, the rolls of Deco Mesh at other craft stores, they do sell them in much larger quantity, like lengthwise, um, and that would help. But these ones, again, were just from the Dollar Tree. So, all right, this is looking really cute and way better. It needed a little oomph. stand up and see where it needs a little more. Here. Now, a lot of times what I do too is I actually stick my wreath up on my door. And this is just a silly tip and trick that I always do. It doesn't matter if it's a, for a wreath, if it's for hanging a picture, anything like that. I always take a picture of it, whatever it is hanging up because the way that you view this when you're when it's laying down and you're looking at it looks completely different for, for some reason as a, compared to when it's hanging up on something so 
I will always notice, oh, there's a little spot right there that I, you know, need to fill out a little more, or this side's a little too heavy, let's uh, move one from here. That is just what I always do when it comes to hanging things, but particularly wreaths, because it, for some reason, you just will always start to see those bare spots. And you may not even see it with your own eye, really, necessarily, when you do hang it up. So that's why I always take a picture, because then, for some reason, things always look different in pictures. And then I always can get a better feel for it. So there we go. That looks much happier and cheery. So I've filled it out. And there is the wreath. I think I'm going to leave the bow off. I don't think I really want that bow back on now. Because I just like the way that the cute little wreath has. I could I could do that. Or I could. I don't really like it. on. Well, that doesn't look that bad. But someplace on here I could hang it. That looks kind of okay down there. But I think I'm going to leave it off. And there we go. There's our wreath. Thank you guys so much for joining in for this. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for sticking around with me, even though I had to run back to the store to get more supplies. But that's just how crafts go, guys. Sometimes you have enough and sometimes you don't. And you just have to improvise or run back to the store. So I will see you guys on the next video tutorial. Remember to head on over to Gathered in the Kitchen for more great tutorials and recipes. Bye, guys.